first saw the Desolation Squad, after we managed to stop laughing at their ridiculous guns, we thought to ourselves, who else has ridiculously big guns? 80s action heroes, and we love them. So in this video, what we're going to do is create our own 80s action space marine hero, using all sorts of bits and pieces. It's going to be a lot of fun, so without further ado, let's get to the day sky! So let's take a look at the miniature who's inspired this madness. It is this fella right here, the Sergeant of the Desolation Squad. And you can see it's because he has this ridiculous gun, perfect for an 80s action hero. But also it's got a massive ammo belt too, which I think is perfect. But there are some changes we want to make to make it suit the theme a little bit better. That's going to be the head and the arm. Now starting out with the arm, we think it'd be really cool to replace that pistol with a massive Rambo style combat knife. So that's what we're going to do. Had a look around the various bits and pieces that we've got. And we found one inside the Assault Intercessors box. You can see it on the picture on the front. It's this arm right here on this guy. So we're going to be using that. Now meanwhile for the head, what better head could there be than the legendary Sly Marlow, who let's face it is basically based on all these sorts of characters. So that's the head we're going to use. He is incised this box right here, so we're going to be using that later on. So a bit of green stuffing is going to be required for that, but we'll come to that later. What we do need to do though is start out with that core body first of all, so that means building that sergeant. So that's where I'm going to begin, going up to a certain point when we can then start making our adjustments. So stay right there, I'll be back. And here it is, the core of the model has been built up, and you can see just why we've chosen this gun for this role. Now, what I have done is keep off things around the shoulders as much as possible, like the shoulder plates and things, so that I've got lots of access to the head when we green stuff it. Big gun aside, of course, because I want to make sure that ammo belt all fits together. But now what I want to do is get it stuck to a base for some stability. But on the base, what we thought would be really cool is to do a throwback to a video we did a while ago, where we painted a tyranid like a xenomorph with High Fleet Hadley's Hope. We're going to have a severed head of one of these on the base of it. So what I've got is a piece of a termagant, this one right here. Here. The plan is to use this head, which you can see can be on its side, the tongue hanging out like it's just been killed. So to do this, what we need to do first of all is remove that head from the shoulders. So with some clippers, I'm just going to cut that away. Then with that removed, we can fire down the underside a little bit for some nice surface contact. And with that done, it's then time to glue it onto the front of the base. And with this stuck on, we can now position the marine behind it. Now that he's glued on the base, he's nice and stable, but it's now time to move on to the combat knife that's going to go here. And for this, remember, we're looking at the Assault Intercessors set. And here we have a combat knife that will make sliced alone bullish. It's going to be absolutely perfect for our purposes here. It's even in the right pose. So what I'm going to do now is clip that off and then stick that on. And at the same time, I'm going to start looking around for some other bits and pieces we can put around his waist, things like a scabbard, grenades, stuff like that. We've now got that knife on just there, and you can see it's looking the part. He looks like he's here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, but he's all out of gum. However, what we have done is add some additions of some grenades going on the bandolier down his chest right there, including some more grenades at his waist. We've got the scabbard for his knife down there, and just in case, we've got a backup pistol right there too. So perfect. Be honest, at this stage, we've not got anything glued on around the shoulders where possible. So no backpack, no shoulders, because now it's time to do the head. Now remember for the head, what we want is the head from Sly Marbo, and here it is. So you complete with a cigar there, absolutely perfect for our purposes. However, there is no neck on this piece, and so you can see the trouble is this needs to fit in there, which means what we need to do is now sculpt a neck, and for this it's time to get out the green stuff. So if you've not used green stuff before, what you get is it in a stick like this, and the idea is that you cut it out with roughly even amounts of both, and then mash them together, and then it starts to harden. So what we need to do to cut that out is get hold of a sculpting tool. That's what I've got right here. You can see with a cutting side on one side, and we've got like a pressing side on the other. And with this, what we need to do is just cut a little bit that we need now. For this, I think what we're going to need is roughly around about this much, and you'll notice that what we've got here is slightly more yellow than blue, which I always recommend because this way it becomes a little bit more pliable, a little bit easier to sculpt if you have it on that side of things. But you just cut out the bit that you need, and then the next thing to do is to cut out that central part, because if you look here where the two join, that's already going to be cured, and this shows up when you're sculpting with it. So always make sure you just cut that central bit out with the touching, and then that is waste just to be thrown away. There we go, we've got our two pieces, so all we've got to do is start mashing them together until they turn into an even green. I've finished mixing the green stuff, so the next thing to do is just twist off roughly how much we think we're going to need, which I think is going to be around about that. It doesn't have to be exact, just loosely in that ballpark, and the idea is that we're going to start out with this to create a rough shape of the join for the head to fit on. Now the head's not going to go on just yet, we just want to work towards that at this stage, and so once you've got that little bit of green stuff, it's time to put it into the neck. So it's just a matter of getting this and just dropping it in there and then pressing it down so it starts to fit there onto the plastic. 
So there we go. So next thing we're going to need is a sculpting tool to start sculpting this. And a tip for this sort of thing when you're using green stuff, to stop it sticking to the tool, get hold of some E45 Preem, which I've got just here. And all you got to do with this is just get a small amount of it. And then this just goes onto the tool where it's going to be encountering the green stuff. So just on there, put it around there, make sure it's not loads and loads, but just on the surface there like that. And then we're ready to go. And so for this first step, what we're aiming to do is to just start getting that loose shape on there for the head to fit onto it. So it's a matter of just pressing it down into there so it's nice and secure and starting to work our way around it. And the idea is to create that almost stepped join that's going to go behind the jaw because if you look at the head, you can see it's a bit of a stepped sort of fit that we're looking for. And we want to make that loosely on there for it to fit nicely. So I'm just going to work it away at it like that now and then we can move on to actually putting the head onto the neck. Here we have the next stump there done with green stuff. I actually removed a little bit in the end because I had slightly too much in there. But you can see I've got roughly that shape and the head is going to stick on there. So the next thing we need to do is to get the head on there and then start fine tuning the sculpt around it to help merge it all together. Now the thing is if we just put the head on there it's going to fall off as we're doing this. So a quick tip here for this sort of thing is to actually glue it on with a little bit of super glue. You only need a tiny amount and it dries real fast so you have to be careful with this. But the way I like to do it is to get hold of a piece of wire like this and use it just to control how much glue is going to go on there. So I've got some super glue here and what I'm going to do is just run some of it onto the wire so we just get a small amount there like that and this way it's very easy to control how much is on there because as you can see we don't need much at all. All we've got to do is just touch this to the areas that are going to make contact there like that and then we can just pop this onto the neck in position. So this means it's just going to sit in here like this. It's got to twist that into place roughly there like that. Now this will dry in just a few seconds and so what we can now do is start fine tuning that green stuff around there using the sculpting tool once again, this time mostly using the blade side here which again I've got some E45 Prem on there just to make sure it doesn't stick. I've got that green stuff sculpted there and you can see I've gone for ridges like those armoured joints that Space Marines have on their armour, almost like it's the undersuit coming up there on the neck. And well, with that done, what we now need to do is to let the green stuff cure. Now ideally you want to leave it for four hours, but preferably it's best to leave it overnight to make sure it is completely solid before you move on. But whilst it is starting to harden, I do actually have plenty of green stuff left. So what I'm going to do now is just use this to do a little bit of sculpting on the base. So on that Tyranid head what I want to do is have some bits of stuff coming out the back of its neck. Also being High Fleet Hadley's Hope, I want to fill in the eyes too. That green stuffing's now done and it's fully cured so it's time to move on to gluing on the final pieces, so the shoulder plates and the backpack. And in this case what I've got is a little selection of them just down here. I've got one of the shoulder plates and also the backpack. And I like this backpack which is why I'm going to glue it on last. But to do this what we need is some plastic glue. So it's just a matter of putting the glue where the parts are going to make contact. So start around here, just pop on some glue just there and there we go. Now remember when I told you I was going to glue the backpack on last? I lied. And here he is everybody, let me introduce you to Major Dutch McLean, a commando from the Void Predators hailing from the death world of Nakatomi. And yes, that's right everyone, we did just stick all of that together. Now we almost called the chapter the Cobra Kai's, but uh, in the end we wanted to go with the Predator theme. So what we're now going to do is start painting the miniature, and to do this it means we've got to undercoat it, and I think what we're going to go for here is mostly that sort of military olive drab from all that American equipment. So I'm going to spray him with some Governor Green from the Colour Forge, and then we can start painting this bad mother... <laughs> Brother Major Dutch McLean is now fully undercoated, so it's time to start painting him. And so here what we want to do is just quickly run through how I'd approach painting a miniature like this. I'll just show you the sort of way as I'd do this and how I'd approach it. And as he's mostly a space marine, what I want to do is approach him like a space marine. And typically my method for this revolves around the colour of the power armour. Now in this case I want to go for that US military drab because all those action heroes the 80s, all their gear would be this sort of colour, so that's why I want to go for that. So what we want to do is pick other colours that can use the same wash as that and get all that done straight away. So we're looking at a brown wash here which means also we can paint in the leathers at the same time. So that means I'm going to start out with a green. Now the one I picked for this is Fury Green and this is a nice US military drab colour and using an old base coating brush I'm just going to roughly paint all that armour with this colour to begin with. Once that's done it's then time to move on to a darker brown, so some scorched earth in this case, and in a more controlled fashion now with a more medium sized brush I'm going to look for any leather details and straps, things like that, and carefully pick those out. With all that done it's then time to put the brown wash on. Here it's some battle mud wash and I want to make sure it gets into all the nooks and crannies on the miniature's armour in particular and that leather of course as we go along. Then it's just a matter of letting that dry completely.
The wash is dry, so now what I want to do is move on to applying another selection of base coat colours that can all use a black wash this time. This is the way I like to paint models like this that gets things going nice and quick and just get some colour on there that then we can start working on to do some finer detail with. But in this case, what I want to do is start out with an off black, so I'm going to use some Death Reaper here, and this is going to be for things like the joints and also the main body of the gun. With that done, it's time for some silver with some surcoat silver, and again, I just want to look for any details that are going to be silver like the knife and pick those out. And this will be followed up with some Spartan bronze for things like the shell casings that appear down here in the magazine and things like that. With those all painted in, we can then wash them, in this case that black wash, using Oblivion black wash, just carefully applied this time only over these colours. Now that black wash is dry too, it's time to move on to the next stage which would be layering here because right now everything's looking a little bit dark, particularly on that green armour, so what I want to do is just re-establish the mid-tone, so now it's time to do some layering. For this I'm going to go back to the original colour, so it's going to be some fury green, and this time I'm applying it carefully with a medium sized brush, just making sure I don't let the colour fall into the recesses on those flat armour panels, just as I work my way around it. Now that I've finished layering that green armour, it's looking much cleaner, so it's time to move on to the next thing, which I think is going to be highlighting the armour, because I always like to get that done on a Space Marine. It always feels like the hump part of painting them, really, because once it's done, things become really quick and we get to go into all those fun little details, so that's why I want to do it now. So I'm going to be starting out with some gung-ho green here, and this is going to be the first main edge highlight, so I'm looking for all the sharp corners and edges, and using a fine brush, I just want to line along each one. Now once that's done, I'm then going to do a second edge highlight with some green beret, and this is going to be a fine highlight here, so I'm looking for the sharpest, most prominent corners and just picking those out with a little bit of this colour. Phew, there we go. All that green armour has been fully highlighted, and when it comes to primary space green armour there's always tons of edges and angles to get, so it does take a bit of time, but now it's done we've passed a really big part of painting the miniature, so it's time to let off some steam and move on to some of the smaller details and highlight them in the same sort of way. Now here throughout I'm looking for lighter colours than we used for that original base coat, so starting with the black, that means I'm going for some greys here, and again I'm looking for sharp edges and angles, just want to carefully follow along each one, picking them out. With this done, it's then time to move on to the leather, again with a lighter brown here, and I'm looking for the edges and things, so just going around the belt, that sort of thing, just looking for those corners. With this done, it's time to move on to the metallics, starting out with the silver. I want a really bright silver here, so I'm using some mithril blade, picking out things such as the cutting edge of the knife. And then we can move on to highlighting the bronze, and in this case, a bright shiny gold will do great to get a nice polished appearance, looking for again parts that are going to be catching the light. Now that I've finished highlighting all those details in the miniature, it's time to do some really fun stuff and here we're going to be starting out with the face. Now for this what I want to do is first of all paint the skin in my usual way of doing Caucasian flesh, and then for the hair I've got to go for a sandy blonde here. So I'm going to do that, then we'll come back and pick out the really cool details on that part. Now I've finished painting the face, we can move in for those fun details, and you can see what we've got is the bandana in there, and also there's the cigar. Now for that bandana, there is of course only one colour it can be, being the 80s, that is red, so I'm going to be painting that with a nice strong red to get things going, and because it's such a small detail, I just need to highlight it after that without worrying about washing it. So a nice bright red for a highlight there. I finished painting that bandana, and also you can see I picked out the cigar too, and for this I just painted it with a brown, and then at the end I did a grey for the ash, and then just picked it out with some very bright orange and yellow there, just for the little bit of embers inside that ash. And well, with that done, we now got one more very important feature to do on the face, because in these sorts of action films there's always that part where the hero's gearing up and ready for action, getting all the guns ready. During that part they put on some camo paint on their face, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. So what I want to do here is create a dark green first of all, so I'm going to mix some fury green with a black and make a really, really dark green. Then I'm also going to use some some gung-ho green, and the idea is to paint these in stripes going across the face to get that camouflage paint look. With that, the face is definitely complete and he's really looking the part, so what I now want to do is just paint in a few small details here, and the first of those is going to be some white. Now the missile warheads are going to be white, but at the same time I'm also going to paint the chest design in this colour too, because it's going to match the transfers I'm going to put on later quite nicely. Then there's a little targeting lens on the gun, and just so everyone knows that the gun is really dangerous, I'm going to put some hazard stripes on this too. 
Now that all those small details are painted, you can see the Brother Major is very nearly finished. We've got the hazard stripes just up here on his ridiculous gun, and also I've taken the moment just to paint in the head of the Tyranid down here, and I painted it like a Xenomorph using the scheme that we did in the High Fleet Hadley's Hope video, including the entrails just there, which I'm going to put some blood over later on. But before any of that, what I want to do now is apply some transfers onto the miniature. And for a bit of fun, what I've gone for is this transfer sheet just here, which is from Warlord Games. It's one of their World War II ones because I'm going to use things like the Allied Star on the shoulder plate and things and some of these codes on the weapons, that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do now is apply these, and then once that's on there, what we can do is a little bit of chipping into them, just get a little bit of weathering on there. Once I've finished all the chipping, it's then time to do the base. And I think in this case, a forest floor base is going to be ideal, and then it's time to put on a bit of blood on that head of the Tyranid. For this, I'm just going to use some Nurgle's Rod. And here he is, the completed Brother Major Dutch McLean of the Void Predators, hailing from the death world of Nakatomi, ready to eat green berets for breakfast, and right now, he's very hungry. So we hope you enjoyed that little romp doing a conversion there, and as you can see, it's easy to find inspiration anywhere, especially if there's things that you find that are really fun, much like these films from the 80s. We really enjoy them, so you can see how it can just inspire doing something fun. That's for a bit of entertainment, really. But you never know how far you can take something like this. So for example, you could do an entire kill team based on the characters from Predator. So we hope you enjoyed that. Hasta la vista, baby. We'll be back.